Hey there, it's Kat with Mars Aviary. Today we're going to go over five household dangers for when you own pet birds. In the age of the internet, lots of misinformation gets spread around rather quickly. That's why it's so important to do your own research, not just rely on what others say. Make your own conclusions on what is best for you and your parrot. That being said, let's get into it. Number one, food. Good owners know that parrots need a variety of fresh foods, such as vegetables and fruits, beans and legumes, herbs and spices, nuts, grains, and even sometimes proteins such as eggs and meat. But do you know which fresh foods pose a threat to your feathered companion? You may not know this, but feeding your parrot rhubarb, cabbage, and figs, while not toxic in and of themselves, can interfere with calcium absorption over time. That's why it should be served infrequently or not at all. In the case of rhubarb, it's best to stay away altogether. The health benefits simply do not outweigh the risks. On the flip side, ginger is a great supplement which improves absorption and can even help car sickness. And have you ever heard that birds can't have added salt or sugar? Well, it's true. While salt and sugar are present in a parrot's diet, it is not necessary to add sugar or salt to anything you give them. A good reason to check the ingredients on your bird's food. Like with human food, sugar and salt are added to many commercial parrot foods to entice parrots to eat it. Number two is air fresheners. Birds have a sensitive respiratory system. Most air fresheners, incense, candles, carpet fresheners, perfume, scented soap, and the like have toxic chemicals and ingredients in them which can cause harm to your bird. This is because birds' respiratory systems allow them to absorb these chemicals much quicker and in larger quantities at a time. Most people have something unscented that they use, but you must be mindful of what you use around your bird. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go in your bathroom right now and throw out all your soap. There are plenty of natural bird-friendly alternatives to air fresheners too, such as boiling cinnamon and cloves on the stove. Always do research before choosing herbs for this purpose. On a similar note, many standard household cleaners also contain toxic chemicals that can harm your parrot. The best cleaner to use is vinegar and water. However, depending on the need, you can also add bird-safe ingredients. For example, if you were cleaning your leather couch or shining your wooden cabinets, you could add olive oil and lemon juice. When buying environmentally friendly or natural cleaners, Still do your research because many of these contain essential oils which are harmful to parrots because they are so concentrated. Number three, predatory pets. Many parrot owners also happen to be animal lovers and can have other pets as well. The most common of which are dogs closely followed by cats. You know how cats and some dogs like to chase around the laser pointer for the red dot? That's what we call prey instinct. Cats do tend to have more prey instinct than dogs, but dogs can still have it, especially considering what breed they are. I've heard about and seen a high number of people who allow their birds to interact with their cats and dogs and everything is perfectly fine. Please do not dismiss the prey instinct of an animal such as a cat or a dog, no matter how well it gets along with your bird. Please remember that just because your dog gets along with your bird doesn't mean he is going to get along with all birds. Having your other pets near your bird requires constant supervision and can be difficult to instill a friendship or even a tolerance between the two. Like success stories, I've also heard horror stories of beloved pets killing a pet bird on purpose or on accident. Dogs and cats, as well as humans, have a bacteria in their saliva that can kill birds. Cats have the same bacteria on their claws as well. One swipe of a paw through cage bars from your cat could end your bird's life. Err on the side of caution when it comes to integrating different types of animals together. What you doing? Yeah? Say it again, what'd you say? Say Gucci Gucci. 
Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Sa Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Ah. What? What? That my dress. That my dress. Are you good, baby? Number four is nonstick cookware. This is something that I didn't know when I brought home my first bird. Nonstick cookware can be toxic. There are some components in most nonstick coatings called PFOA and PTFE, also known as Teflon. While most of the time cooking with Teflon is technically safe, old cookware or cookware which has been damaged or burned can pose a threat not only to your bird but also to you. Besides the coating itself being toxic if ingested, when heated up it releases toxic fumes which can and absolutely will kill your bird faster than you have time to recognize the signs and get your bird outside to fresh air. For the same reason candles are toxic, Teflon affects birds more than it affects us because of their respiratory systems. There are some alternatives to Teflon which are labeled non-toxic. Ceramic is a common alternative and acceptable to cook on without fear. Other cookware I would suggest is stainless steel, glass, and cast iron. Copper itself is toxic to birds, however, it is unclear if cooking on it poses a threat. I know many people who keep copper cookware and continue to cook with it with their pet birds in the home. Keep in mind that some companies are labeling their non-toxic coating as being PFO free, but leaving off the PTFE. That's because likely it does contain PTFE. PTFE is technically non-toxic. However, that does not mean it won't harm your bird. It's not just pots and pans that you need to worry about either. You should also look out for pressure cookers, air fryers, and other small appliances which might use non-stick coating. That tickles! That tickles! Teflon can sometimes also be found in popcorn bags, irons, hair dryers, curling irons, light bulbs, and even aluminum foil, to name a few. There will be a link in the description with more information about Teflon and where it could be hiding in your home. <laughs> FYI, in case you're wondering, the aluminum foil you need to watch out for is the non-stick aluminum foil. Regular aluminum foil should be just fine to cook with. In addition to the cookware, I also wanted to mention that you should never, ever use the self-cleaning feature on your oven. If you've ever used the self-cleaning feature on your oven, you know what it smells like and you know how powerful those fumes are that come out of your oven when you are self-cleaning it. This is not good for your bird and it can kill them in a matter of minutes. Number five, windows and doors. And finally, in my opinion, the worst household hazard of all are windows and doors. If you have a bird, you probably know at least one person whose bird has escaped from the home through an open window or door. It's always a very sad occurrence because most birds that fly away are never recovered. In the description I'm putting a very informative video by Bird Tricks which goes over what to do if you lose your parrot. There's a lot of good information in there. I would recommend watching it now rather than wait for the unthinkable to happen. Birds fly. It's what they were born to do. What most people don't realize is that pet birds, while they do have the ability to fly, are often not able to fly long distances due to being out of shape. Imagine if you've never run since you were in grade school and suddenly you decide to go outside for a run. How far would you get before stopping? Another misconception and very controversial topic is clipping your bird's wings. Clipping your bird's wings prevents them from flying in your home where there is no wind, where there is no wind and no other outside elements. Outside is a completely different story. Even if you don't feel the wind, it can still be strong enough to pick your bird up to fly away. Clipped wings can only do so much, especially for a small bird. To put it into perspective, I have two parrotlets and they weigh one ounce each. With their wings, even if the wings were clipped, they would have the ability to fly if a gust of wind picks up. Alternately, flying could be their best bet as clipped birds may plop straight on the ground as soon as they take off they become a target to predators such as hawks a good hawk is one that you can't see sadly this happened to somebody i know recently where her bird was clipped landed on the grass and was swooped up in an instant by a hawk and killed it's not just outside doors and windows either 
You've probably read at least one instance of someone accidentally closing the door and squishing their bird trying to prevent them from flying out of the door. You may also have heard people closing the refrigerator doors on their parrot and killing them. A great tool to have when it comes to flying is recall training. Most birds who are tame can pick up on recall training relatively easily and quickly, although it is easier to have if you have a bond with your bird already. Recall training is especially useful if you use it for longer distances using declines or inclines, and of course if you are able to do it safely outside, because outside is a completely different ball game for your parrot if they've lived indoors their entire life. And that's it for today. If you can think of a hazard that I missed, or if you have an idea for a future video, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. You say hello to the birdie. Hello. Say hello. Is that you? Is that you? Is that you, Tika? Oh my god, I realized I didn't have my mic plugged in the whole time. Oh, no. You're chasing me, you're chasing me, you're chasing me, oh no, oh no, you gonna catch me, you gonna catch me, oh no, oh no! Yeah? Don't be bad.